good morning, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is Wednesday and I'm out in the front yard right now. I am working on a task that I seem to have to be doing every morning here lately. I don't know those of you who have this problem, or maybe it's not a problem, uh, but it has to do with these little mounds I keep finding in my front yard every single morning. And I'm talking about hundreds of these, hundreds of these. And I suspect what they are. I suspect they are worms. I think we have worms that are pushing up the soil. They're in the ground, uh, doing whatever worms do inside the ground, and then uh, uh, pushing the soil above the ground into the grass there, leaving these little mounds. They're kind of unsightly, uh, but I, I don't think they're doing any harm. As a matter of fact, I think they might be doing some good to the yard because if you have worms in your yard, that shows you have healthy, uh, good, rich soil because worms like rich soil. And what they do is when they kind of travel through the soil, they kind of aerate it, but they also make a mess. So what I do, I grab my, I grab my hose every single morning here, and I do a little bit of forceful pressure on it, and I break down all that soil again, so we have a nice flat lawn. It just makes a mess. Uh, again, I, I'm not sure that's a really big deal, but it's something that I need to do because I hate seeing and walking on these little mounds all the time. Uh, anyway, uh, I haven't been online for the last few days. Uh, and the main reason is I had this terrible cold, uh, cold, uh, I guess you could call it the summer cold. Uh, it happens sometimes. And uh, I'm in the recovery mode now, so we are about to get back into doing some of the videos around with some projects around the house here. Uh, yesterday, uh, was it yesterday? Day before yesterday. Day before yesterday, uh, we had a nice visit and uh, by one of our subscribers that came in from Australia. Uh, so we are going to add that to today's video as well. That's going to be one of the highlights. It was a very interesting visit, and I think you're going to find out some really uh, neat heart heartfelt type of uh, uh, comments from uh, one of our subscribers and his Asawa as well. Uh, uh, yesterday also we were attended a wedding of uh, a couple that live here in the subdivision and that was a really nice event. Uh, the event was done down at Town Hall and it was, uh, it was uh, chaired by the, uh, the mayor, uh, the mayor of Lipa, the one you saw in our uh, rotary video uh, from last week as well. Uh, so got to see the mayor twice in a week. Isn't that amazing? Well, let's go ahead and get today started. This is a long intro. Uh, I got work to do here uh, and we need to get today started. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. <music> Now, I have to tell you, every morning that I wake up, it is such a pleasure just to walk around the yard and to observe new growth and see something a little bit different because it's almost on a daily basis here that you get to see that. And the nice thing about the Philippines is you get to see this 365 days out of the year because the weather is like today. Every day is the same, except we have a rainy season, we have a dry season, uh, but everything is green 365 days of the year. Uh, so you get to observe this all the time. Of course, some of the seasons, uh, some of the fruit trees are in season uh, where they bear fruit, and then, uh, but there always seems to be something bearing fruit around here. Case in point, this morning I came out here and I've been waiting for this to happen. Now, I don't know the cycle for this over my shoulder. This is the magic fruit tree. And when I walked out here this morning, look what I found. Here's a little magic fruit on here. See these right here? And uh, they just kind of snuck up on me. Here's one right over here. Uh, you can see right there. And what these are, I, I showed you these before. Uh, if you have something that's a little bit bitter or sour, and you put this along the, your dish with this and you bite into this along with the bitter or the sourness 
of the food that you're eating, this neutralizes it and gives it a little bit of sweet taste. It's almost like a, a, like a natural uh, sweetener uh, that you have. Like if you have the natural sweeteners for your coffee, this is what this is right here. And this plant is doing good. I love seeing all the new growth on here like this. Uh, I haven't had to really trim this back yet. Uh, but I imagine at some point we'll get it to where we'll have to do a little bit of pruning on it But it's doing really good. Also, I've been noticing all the blossoms on the calamansi here. Calamansi is a year-round. It will produce uh, calamansi fruit. So we have a lot of them that came in about the same time. These are only about halfway. Uh, they'll double in size right here and then we'll be picking these. Uh, but you know, if you only have one calamansi bush in your yard, it can actually produce enough to provide all your needs for your calamansi in your house for drinks or for things that go along with some of your foods to add uh, that little bit of spice that you really like to go with the soy sauce and maybe some onions or something like that. Also, if you've been following the growth of the sun-kissed oranges over here, I want you to look. Look at the size of these right here. Uh, these sun-kissed oranges, uh, they are turning from green. They're starting to get a little bit of the yellow. Uh, and I imagine this is my first experience with sun-kissed oranges. I imagine they'll get too orange uh, to the orange on the outsides. Uh, so these are doing well. And I can't wait until we can pick our first fruit off of this small little tree. Now folks keep asking me about that transplanted papaya tree. Remember the papaya tree that we had on Baje Kubo Island up here? And we moved it and all the leaves came off. Well, it's, it's doing well. I want you to see everything is coming back nice. And even the fruit, even the papaya fruit at the lower level where I dropped all of the branches off, uh, these are getting bigger. So this is going to do good. Now the other three that I transplanted, uh, they're coming back in and they're going to take as much time. You just have to be patient with nature sometimes. Especially if you, if you do a big thing like a transplant and they go into shock. But most of the time, especially papaya, and I keep talking about the robustness of it, uh, they will eventually come back. Now this guy is coming back. It uh, looks kind of small. The leaves look kind of small up here, but it's going to do fine. Uh, this will grow. And remember, these are, I believe, the red lady variety. Uh, so they shouldn't grow extremely tall like our, like our native papaya that's over here. As a matter of fact, I got to start pulling off some of the papaya. But the fruit are small on this one right here, but we have an abundance of them. Now, if you let them get really yellow like that, what ends up happening, you get all these flies and the flies get inside and you just can't eat the fruit because they'll, uh, they'll eat it from the inside out. So I have to go and get a ladder and get up there. And I need to clean up that bunch of papaya as well. And also, our cucumbers and our zucchini are starting to look really good back here. Nice and healthy. And I have the trellis netting that we're going to attach to the bamboo here. It's going to go up all on the side, go over the top, and go across. And I also have uh, the, these are the uh, grapevines. Uh, all of these are from three different grapevines, and I retransplanted them from the wall. I had them, and they were starting to move along uh, the fence line, but I think it would do much better to give us a little bit of shade on the top here. So we're going to see how they do here, and they're actually doing very good. Uh, they this had nothing when I put this in the ground; it was all clipped off, and it looked it looked something like this right here. But within one week. This is what it's looking like now. Uh, so I clipped off several of these and you can see uh, we have new growth here. And I don't know about this one right here. Uh, this one might do okay. Uh, and then all of these, we're gonna take these and we're gonna let them go across the top. And uh, maybe we'll propagate more. I really hope we get some grapes. And at, once we do get grapes, which might take a couple of years, I don't know, uh, we're gonna test our hand in making some uh, wine. Now, I can't remember if I mentioned it, but I had a lot of dragon fruit. Well, I didn't have a lot of dragon fruit. I had two uh, that ended up turning into about four uh, dragon fruits because uh, a clipping off of them we put right next to the other one by the fence back here. And they were running up on the fence here. You can see here's remnants of the roots. Uh, or, or the vining portion of the dragon fruit. And this is one piece that's still left in the ground. 
and I have another one back behind all this but th this is really shady back here and I think they'll do a lot better over here in the raised bed so what I did if I didn't mention it before I took all the clippings off of there and I connected it to the bottom of the bamboo supports uh, for the raised bed garden now what I did here is I put it into fours one two three and then four back here and the concept here is allow all of these to go up uh, continue going up to the top of the bamboo here and I want them to flower over we'll train it we'll have it train over and be like a little canopy right here and all hopefully we we'll get some fruits all on the end and maybe some fruits as we're going along I did this on both of these and what I plan on doing eventually I want to put it on all four posts so I have them all here and I plan on putting it over in those corners at some point. Now while we're standing here, an update. I want to give you an update on the cistern. So what I did, I contacted the a company that we had before we went on the vacation back to the US uh, that was doing the fix action to the, the waterproofing of the cistern. Uh, as you remember, or you might not if you just joined us here on the channel, this cistern, it's a big cistern. It's like uh, three and a half meters high, three and a half meters uh, wide and deep. Uh, it's a big cistern. Uh, so it's like, it's like, I think, 30 meters cubed, 30 cubic meters of water it will hold. Uh, but it, it's never held water properly because the contractor that built this he didn't know the dynamics the techniques of building a cistern about he didn't know the special things that you have to do to waterproof it uh, so it leaked or from day one then we had another company come out uh, to do the fix action the name of that company is VP seal and VP seal came out and they stripped it on the inside they did some grinding they put a waterproofing solution inside there uh, that was embedded in some uh, steel mesh and some more type of concrete. Uh, they did some reinforcement of fiberglass in the corners and all. Uh, and it helped. It helped out a lot, but we still have uh, a major amount of water that's leaking. Uh, so what we're going to do is next week, I, after I contact them, they said uh, they will come out after I do a drain. So we'll be draining this over, put it today's Wednesday, probably about over the next uh, four to five days, we will drain this all the way down. We'll make it empty, we'll clean it out, and they will come out and they will uh, look and see what they need to do to finish this project right here. We need to get this thing waterproof uh, so we stop the water leak and quit paying for water uh, that's just seeping out into the soil. I gotta tell you, the chimes, the chimes are just wonderful back here. I was so worried about putting chimes in the backyard. Uh, but when they're tuned properly and you have a good quality set of chimes in your yard uh, and they're designed so that they don't just make a bunch of noise and become annoying and irritating, uh, they actually soothe. And th these are very calming. You can hear it. You can barely hear it in the background. And even when the wind is blowing kind of hard, the way this thing is designed on the bottom, this little plate, it makes it where it isn't like bang 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 and real loud noises and it's really uh, very calming to the nerves now speaking of calming to the nerves that is a great intro for the second half of today's episode and it has to do with our visitors that came in a couple of days from australia and i didn't realize that other than diy people coming here to for diy and for information just curiosity about retiring in the philippines there's other reasons why people watch youtube vlogs similar to this one right here and i think you'll find this really interesting they have some great things to share if you are thinking about touring uh, the Philippines, uh, places that maybe you don't know about and places you might want to visit uh, along with some pictures that they brought along with them as well. So anyway, uh, without further delay, let's go ahead and get into the second part of today's episode. Today is Monday, right? Monday. Monday yeah, uh, it's I Monday, that's right, because uh, <laughs> we have some guests today. Uh, we were going to have these guests tomorrow, but we found out that some of our neighbors here in the neighborhood are getting married tomorrow and were invited to the wedding. So we were fortunate that they had a flexible flexible schedule that they could move it up a day. Uh, I think you said you had three days that you have available <laughs> in, the, in the area as well. Yeah. well anyway, these folks, I'm going to let them introduce themselves, but I'm going to do a partial in introduction right now as well. Uh, but they are coming from down below, <laughs> down below, <laughs> down below, 
that down <laughs> under. Is that the term? <laughs> down under. Down under. And, the, <laughs> and the folks are coming from down under, and down under meaning Australia. No, and no, they, sure. they have some neat history behind where they're coming from. Anyway, I want to introduce to you today Alfredo and his lovely wife, Bibi. So anyway, uh, you guys, uh, how long have you been in uh, the Philippines right now for your vacation? Well, We've been here in, uh, six weeks already. Six weeks? Six weeks, yeah. This year. We <laughs> flew in from uh, Hong Kong. We uh, we survived the protests. <laughs> we we were there for four days, but we were lucky enough to survive all the protests. Is it, was that the start of your trip, your vacation yeah, trip? Yeah, you yes. started in Hong Kong? We flew direct from Perth to Hong Kong, and then we spent four days. Um, Bibi's two sisters, we brought them across. So we had a, like a family reunion in Hong oh, Kong. Yeah. It was Very excellent. Happy. So what did you do when you were over in Hong Kong? Oh, well. <laughs> Join the protest. <world. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Get another tattoo? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to, but there is the protest. <laughs> <laughs> because they get very chaos, no? So that, you know, but oh Bali, Bali is the place for the Bali's tattoos. The, yeah, mm. the the yeah, well, one, one of Bibi's sisters, her younger sister, Corey, just retired last year. And ah. one of her life's dreams was always to go to Disneyland. Ah. And of course, they have a Disneyland in Hong a Kong. Small one. Ah. <laughs> so did you so, do that with them? Yes. Yes. Ah. On, awesome. on the Sunday, on the Monday when the general strike was on. So we oh had to no. sort of juggle our schedule. Uh, to try and avoid the protests as much as possible. Well, well tell me, you know, so we, we have a lot of international viewers um, from around the world, and you know that Disney is world-renowned. Uh, they have the Disneyland in France and China yes. and Japan and California and Florida. Florida. Now, the one, the one in Hong Kong, have you ever been to a Disney before? No, no. No. So, what was your experience at Disney? People might want to know about that. Yeah, well, it, it was mainly for um, my wife's sister. Uh, because that was her. I, w I wanted to go to Disneyland, but my mum had always wanted to go to Disneyland, and before she passed, she went to the real Disneyland in Anaheim in, in California. Mm -hmm. And so my desire also was when I go to Disneyland, I want to go to the real Fine. Disneyland. <laughs> 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 Friends of mine have been to the one in Orlando in Florida, and they talk very highly of it. I know it's, it's quite big and very popular, but I want to go to the one in Anaheim, because to me that's... Uh, maybe a bit of an old. Yeah, the original. Yeah, yeah. Yes, right. So, original. You can yeah. have the original. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for Corey, it was it was a great buzz for her because it was life life dream. We went the day of the strike, the general strike in Hong Kong on the uh -huh. Monday. So we it was a bit of a torturous trip, oh, to traffic yeah. wise, because yeah. we had to avoid Kowloon as much as possible. Uh, but we got there, and unfortunately that day it was nice, but we could only see two attractions because of the general strike. Some of the people at uh, Disneyland were not working, they were on strike. Oh, oh. But the thing I was disappointed about, I didn't see Donald Duck and I didn't see Mickey Mouse. Oh, oh. oh no! <laughs> you had to see Mickey Mouse, you didn't yeah. see Mickey Mouse? Oh no! And we saw Main Street and we saw oh, the, the future. <laughs> we, we, we saw Mickey Mouse in a keychain. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's, yeah. it's quite small. It's quite small. Yeah, small. Apparently. Well, bad t bad timing. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was all part of bad timing. Yes. So you're going to do it again? You're going to try to do it again when it's <laughs> <laughs> do it again different in different the United States. States. In, in California? Oh, absolutely, yes. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you d you did Hong Kong for four days, and then you came over. And I know there's a lot of things you did on your vacation over here. As a matter of fact, you're going to show me some pictures here in just yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Tell us about your adventures here in the Philippines. Well, um, when um, my wife and I, we've been married 40 years, but I, I came to the Philippines first in the 1970s. And learning about the Philippines and the culture and the history and everything, I'd always wanted to stay at the Manila Hotel because I knew the historical significance of the Manila Hotel. Which is? But, which is MacArthur stayed there. Oh, you know, okay, General yeah. MacArthur stayed there in the Second World War. And it's been, it's, it was been an uh, icon of a Filipino hotel. It's, it was, the Philippine, uh, Manila Hotel was sort of up there with Raffles in Singapore. So we had the opportunity this time to stay. We said, right, yeah, we will do the first three days. We'll stay in the middle of the hotel, and it, it was it was everything I thought it was going. Well, I know I know you're a history buff. You were telling me you, you love history and you love geography. Did, did it meet up to the, the your expectations? Yes. That you read about? Yes, yes, it did. It was uh, the, the lobby was sensational. When I done oh, yeah. yeah, it was beautiful. The really service nice. and the food, it was definitely up there. Oh. Yeah. I, I want I want to greet them too, um, all the belated 40th yes. anniversary. Oh, that's right! <laughs> Happy 40th, guys! Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you went. So you were in Manila. You were at the hotel there, and then then what? Family time, and then we went to Palawan. 
<laughs> now, now I've been hearing people talk about Palawan, and they're saying that it's starting to get over tourists. How how was it this time of the year for when you were there? Was uh, a lot of people or not? Yeah, well, we we had previously been there ourselves. We we went there the first time in 1986, and one of our many long time trips ago. Oh, from the time yes. we got married. Uh, we so go. you you have a good comparison now from oh, 1986 yeah. until today. So what's the yeah. delta there? Because every time we'd come back to the Philippines after we got married, we'd always go and visit. Because I, I always love to go and visit new places and get more to know the Philippines. So we went there in 1986 for mm -hmm. a visit, and it was in the early days of tourism. There was sort of no tourism at that time, it was just travellers. And we did a lot of freelance touring. And going back this time, it had changed immensely. But in, in what way? Uh, oh, a lot more people. Yeah. Brand new airport, a, bra a beautiful, a bit of beautiful new airport there, and uh, and and the city itself had expanded, new shops, new infrastructure. All the roads are really nice now because we can remember, uh -huh. we can remember driving from Puerto Princesa to a place called Rojas, which goes north. It took us five hours on a jeepney in 1986. Now you can do the same trip in two hours on a nice paved road. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so recommendations for Palawan, what, what for like places to stay or sites uh, to see, what's your recommendations there? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. We stayed at a, at a place in, in Porto itself, Porto Princesa, called Princess. Princesa Garden Resort and Spa, which is on the water. Oh, it's uh, so nice. And <laughs> it is beautiful. It you is got beautiful. pictures of that too? Yes, oh, I have. Yes. And <laughs> some of the sunrises, you see the water, it's just so beautiful. Oh, it's so, so nice. nice. Yeah. 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 Then, then you ended up here. Well, before, yeah, yeah. but before that, <laughs> we've for, we forgotten. The, 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 nice uh, we've forgotten the coup d'état of our whole Philippine adventure trip. Other than this here at Villa Feliz, is <laughs> <laughs> right oh, up yes. there. Was we we went to a place called Amanpulo. Ah, oh, that's nice. Which place. is a, a sort of like a private resort. Um, in the Cayayan Archipelago, which is north of north of Palawan, between Palawan and Mindoro, and it's an mm. archipelago of quite a few islands, and there's one little island called Amanpulo. Oh, actually, sorry, the island Malikan. is called. The, yeah, that's right. You're Pamalikan. right. Yeah, you're right. The, the island is called Pamalikan Island, and the, the resort is called um, Amanpulo, Malikan. and it's owned by. Uh, uh, a well-known, two well-known Filipino families called Soriano and Ayala families, which are very mm -hmm. famous in the Philippines, so well-known families, and they own this island, and mm -hmm. the whole island is a resort, oh. but it is so beautiful. It is, without doubt, the most beautiful island I've ever been to. Oh. I've well, that's, that's a high recommendation there. How were you there. able to get there if it's a private? You've got to, you've got to, fly, you, you've got to fly in on a, on a private plane from Manila to their airstrip, and fly back out. Uh -huh. So, so do, do, do I just say I know Alfredo, and they'll, they'll let me they'll let me in the front door? Is <laughs> that all I have to say? <laughs> and you uh, walk in a red carpet. <laughs> <laughs> no, you mentioned Jess, babe's babe's uh, brother. Yes, the one who can. Yes, his oh, yeah. brother. He's just start investigating. <laughs> <laughs> because he made a name for himself there. <laughs> but I did some research. I must admit. I mean, I, I went on the internet and. I had been reading some travel blogs. I've been reading travel blogs for a while because I'm always passionate about travel. It's run by the same company that started, uh, they're called the Aman Group, and they started their very first um, resort in Thailand, in Phuket, Thailand. Um, so we'd been, my wife and I had actually been to the one in Bali. There's one in Bali called Aman Amandari. Amandari. And it's very close to a village we quite they often go to. In the United States, too, Arizona. Uh, yeah, they've got, and they've got them in quite a few places in the world. But they're always ex pretty exclusive resorts. So they're, they're a little bit more expensive, but you get what you pay for. They are really, uh, yeah. really, the service, everything is top notch. Uh -huh. Well, you, you, you both seem very relaxed. So. <laughs> <laughs> what about the villas the, the villa we stay? Yeah, but they, they have two types of accommodation. You have casitas. Uh, or you have villas. Villas are mainly for family groups, but you casitas, and you can have a beachside casita, or you can have a, a tree, tree casita, or a hill, hill casita. Yes. We had a hill casita, so it was on a little hill in the jungle. Oh, Everything really you could nice. want for. <laughs> really nice. Wake up in the morning to the sound of birds. Yeah. Not, not roosters? No, no roosters. <laughs> <laughs> no roosters. Native birds, you know. And well, that's our native birds. <laughs> I don't know, we, 
you can see that. Oh yeah, I can see. Oh, oh my God. Uh, that it's is like a beautiful uh, beach. Look at that. That's just your picture or uh, the advertisement? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't think you can get a bad picture there. That is beautiful. Even with even with the clouds, it looks dramatic yeah. in the background. Now this is something. This is going back to South Cotabato. This is the Tabili. Tiboli. Tiboli, sorry, Tiboli. Ah, yeah, the one dance. Family group, the dancing. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. The, the, the girls, yeah. Very nice dancing. Uh, this was at uh, this is the, the, uh, the, the, the waterfalls. Uh, this was the waterfalls. zip line up there. Yeah. That's where we did the zip line from. Yeah. Now you guys don't, you have no property over here in the Philippines. Oh. So you're, you're primarily residing in, in Australia. That's your, that's going to be your retirement. Yes, yes. We yeah. yeah. retired to Mandurah, which is in south of Perth, about six Because most, most of the folks that are coming over here, especially the ones that are coming to visit, they're doing like we're doing. They're, they're going from a foreign country and they're moving into the Philippines. But you were explaining to me you're at the age now to where you're already settled in right there. And to be able to spend the time and the effort and the resources yeah. <laughs> is just be a little bit too much. At, yeah. uh, if, if I mean, if I was 10 years younger, I, I would <laughs> definitely contemplate it. Because I'll be honest, in the early days, we, we even thought about doing like a lot of people do, six months at home, six yeah. months in the Philippines, oh, because be nice. we just love, love the lost time. But as time goes on, your priorities yeah. change and situation. We'll have a couple of lots available <laughs> next door. Next door is if, I'm going I'm to change uh, topics. I'm going to change course here a little bit. Uh, a couple of things that we normally ask, and you brought it up because you were asking us earlier, but uh, uh, the, the first thing is, it, how, did, how, how did you two meet? You talked about it a little bit. Uh -uh. Oh, yeah. uh, it, it, was, it was actually by chance, really by chance. I, I first came to the Philippines in 1977. And I met my wife through this scenario. On the plane to Manila from Singapore, there was another gentleman on the plane who actually worked in the same company as me. He was a work colleague. I didn't know him that well. I knew who he was because it was a small company. And he was going to the Philippines to meet his pen friend. Anyway, as it transpired, this gentleman that, that, that I was with, he had his photograph because he he'd had a few too many to drink. and. I went to find his pen friend because he, he, he was a bit overwhelmed by the whole situation. So anyway, I did find her eventually amongst all these people and I asked her and she said, yeah, and we went outside and introduced her. As it transpired, at that time in the Philippines, a, a, a young woman going out, never go out on their own, they always have a chaperone. Dama, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, the chaperone, it was one of those things that was part of the culture of the Philippines, you know, young women don't go out by their own. And the chaperones happened to be what turned out to be my wife and her girlfriend, <laughs> and that's how we met. <laughs> so the so the other question is, how how did you find out about the channel? How did you get oh. connected with us here? Well, this is a this is a good story, a very good story actually, because it, it's one that's close to me because it actually helped me through a health issue. I had a major health issue um, just prior to um, fin uh, retiring from my career in the mining industry. I had uh, very bad depression. And once I had fully decided to leave the mining industry, I was still living in the same home in the same town where I was working. And I came across your blog by looking at my iPad one night, and I was just doing some, I was on YouTube, and I come across it, and I thought, oh, this looks interesting, and I started watching it. And that sustained me through the deepest, darkest times of my depression, because it gave me hope. See, inspiration. It gave me hope. Um, um, and I came, you know, I came through it. I mean, because anyone has had depression and knows what it's like. It's not, not very pleasant. Well, that, that, you know, that that's that's amazing, and that that is one of the best stories I've ever heard. I was expecting you to say we put you more into a depression when you started watching <laughs> this video. <laughs> but I've learned a lot from you, from DIY. But just the whole process of the building a home, and it, and it was, it was. The journey was going on, that you and Ness were going on, that whole journey of when you lived in the apartment and you walked to the place, and it was just, and just the so whole concept. And it's Yeah, it was an intrigue. It is. Yeah. It, it's, it's an evolution, isn't it? Yeah. If, for, the, for those who ha haven't watched the video before, it's an evolution from, uh, and, and it's evolution across the board, from the construction of the house, That's right, yeah. from the relationships in the neighborhood, in the community, mm -hmm. uh, even from the improvements on the videos, because the, the videos at the very beginning 
We yeah. added better equipment when we started doing, adding mm -hmm. a good mic to take care of. Oh, yeah. People would write into, into the channel, make comments, say, I think it would be better to do this angle or this angle or help, you know, <laughs> with the point of view when you're trying it. So we listened. Yeah. But to see this, and because I lo always loved the Philippines and was, to see the journey you guys were going on it, it was something I really enjoyed it was one of my highlights of my day every day because uh, you know especially here magandang umaga I know some people they get so they get anxious when he doesn't it, upload uh, any yeah. video they wish of video well I'm, I'm what well, I'm doing now Ness is I'm actually going back and re-reviewing yeah, nice some of those earlier episodes yeah. a lot of people tell us that too they say uh, especially some of our real faithful subscribers who are who, who if we're not on one day or two day if we miss a few days so they're making phone calls or doing <laughs> Skype and they're saying where are you guys where are you guys okay but what they'll tell us is what you're saying they'll go back and, and they'll go back and we'll review one of the older videos uh, just until we post another video and that's that's so complimentary of people doing things like that and you've done a good job yeah thank you thank you <laughs> but you know what it's it's folks it's folks really it's folks like you that keep us doing what we're doing yeah uh, <laughs> uh, when we find that we get fe good feedback and we help somebody uh, mm -hmm. uh, th because the whole thing is about I said earlier it's about helping if, mm -hmm. if I learn something I want to <laughs> share what I'm learning like from it's it. part of the family right yeah it's like oh <laughs> it's like a lot we have a big did, did you say that yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think I've known you for a long time. Yeah, it's, it's like that's so that's, that's so true, Ness. Oh, that's like that's so true. It's just like you guys when you walk through the gate, when you walk through the front gate, it's like a, a big hug, and it's like it's like you've known us forever. It's not we, it, 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 it it's is. I feel I feel that our family has grown into thousands yeah. now since nice we've started family. this, and and it's a good feeling, and and. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I'm, I'm glad uh, that the, the videos help you out. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, well, I'm completely, completely clear on my um, uh, medication completely what? gone. Oh, then I can send you the bill? <laughs> okay. Okay. Why, did, why did I ever need to go to a doctor? <laughs> Or see a psychiatrist, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Now, wasn't that a great visit by our friends from Australia? I always like learning about things from people's homes as well as what they do when they're over in the Philippines. Also, uh, what their plans are if they plan on moving to the Philippines and retiring here. But we got a really good, what I consider a wealth of information that we'll use, uh, which is archived here on the channel, uh, if we want to go back and visit some of those places that they did as well. Well, that's going to be it for today because I noticed that we're running a little bit long on today's episode. Uh, today is a general cleanup down here inside the basement. I had some projects going on earlier in the week, uh, putting up some tools, uh, do a little bit of cleanup. And then tomorrow, the plan for tomorrow is we have to do a trip downtown. We're still looking for other complimentary items that we're going to do to fix up the man cave down here. Uh, so that will probably be some of what we're going to be talking about tomorrow. We also have to take a trip in uh, to Mil Manila here uh, in the near future because there are things we need uh, on a shopping trip and to source out for some upcoming projects here as well. Uh, well, like I said, I'm going to close for today so this doesn't go too long. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please give us a thumbs up. Please share. And if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream Heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You'll be subscribed. You'll be notified the next time we upload a new video. So until such time, you have a wonderful and blessed day. today's episode and you would like to see more just like these just click on one of the helpful links over to your right and you might be able to pick up on some good information on DIY projects how to or if you are interested in moving to the Philippines and building you'll find answers there as well